is Dust Nelson. We're out here at Superstition. Uh, it's a desert area that I grew up in here in Southern California. And we got the Yamaha Special Edition intro out here today. You know, I've uh, had a good experience with the vehicle so far. Not only is it just a blast out here in places like this, but um, you know, we've been racing it and it's been doing well. We won Lake Elsinore Grand Prix at the end of last year, uh, which was really cool. We uh, came through the pack to, uh, to beat a bunch of competitors there. And um, so that was the first win. And then uh, this season, we started out super strong in the, in the Lucas Oil Regional Series. We went over to Arizona for rounds one and two. Uh, we won the first round, which was awesome. And actually, me and Corey Well were uh, one and two on the podium for the first round. So that was, that was pretty cool and pretty impressive. You know, the Polaris guys have had uh, three years to develop their car, and we've had a few months. Um, the second round, I got second. So, the, you know, consistency's there as well. Um, and then uh, just last weekend, the opening round of the California Regionals over at Glen Helen uh, won that one too. So, and actually, Corey finished second there too. So, um, the Wag Z is, uh, you know, beyond impressed me so far in racing circumstances. Um, and I'm just pumped, you know, we have such a good platform to build a race car off of, and uh, Yamaha's made it really easy for us. I think actually you'd be surprised at how stock my, my YXZ is. Um, we race a production 1000 class, which means you cannot change any internals inside the engine. You can mess with the intake, uh, you can mess with the exhaust, and you can reflash or run a programmer. Uh, I run a completely stock intake. Uh, I run a Dubok Racing exhaust, and I have my ECU remapped by Benchmark Performance. Um, Engine-wise, that's all I have. I have stock A-arms. I have Fox Kashima coated shocks with a dual spring kit, which you know anybody can upgrade to. Um, I'm running DWT wheels and tires. I mean, if you walk up to my SR, or, you know my SR1 is a fully built race car, and then you look at my YXZ. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing how stock the YXZ really is. Uh, you, you know, I have a good race seat in it from Sparco and, and good harnesses and you know, strap yourself into a nearly stock machine and it's so competitive that I think it's uh, possible to go win in right away. It's a lot different to, to race a car compared to uh, racing the quads and dirt bikes, you know, what I've done my whole life. Um, but I still get to uh, feel that itch, so to say, to go riding. I, I still work with Yamaha as a test rider on both uh, motorcycle and ATV stuff anytime they have uh, work or, or things that need to be gone through. So uh, I still get to ride a decent amount, mostly motorcycles, but um, you know, occasionally a quad. And then, and then you know, the, that desire and that passion for racing is never going to leave me. And it's and luckily, I just get to channel it into racing cars now. And, and for me, racing like the Lucas Oil Regional Series is like racing motocross in a car. And then I, you know, I still uh, race the Work Series as well, which you know, the Work Series is a little bit more drawn out. And in the cars, it gets a little single file sometimes, but you just have to set people up that much more. You know, it's, it's very similar to racing a quad at the Work Series or something like that. The entries out here on the West Coast are uh, pretty cool. I mean, the Production 1000 class had 19 cars last weekend at Glen Helen. I think that it'll grow. I think we'll be in the mid 20s to up to 30 at, at points during this year. Um, the work series is obviously doing very well in the side by side classes. I think that at a couple races they've had um, like 150 plus side by sides. Uh, there's a ton of people out here racing side by sides, and I think it's going to keep growing. I think uh, I think the organizations, the race organizations, are going to uh, kind of they're going to have the biggest say in how much money is spent to go racing. Um, if they keep these pro production and pro stock classes to where you can race a stock engine, um, that's a huge expense that's, that's skipped. If you're running a stock engine, there's less rebuilds, you know, not only the expense of building the engine in the first place, but then you have to rebuild it more often. And uh, the you know the chance of catastrophic failure goes way up you know to where if we're racing stock engines i feel confident that i can race a stock engine one top end all year no problem that's the best way to keep the most competition and the, you know to make it more affordable makes it you know more open to people coming in um, you, if you make everything to where you have the super modified engine and you change every part of the car 
then um, it gets away from the layman kind of being able to the regular nine to fiver guy trying to come into the sport because it's just going to be too expensive. And um, I think that's when you might start getting away from the the draw of a side by side because you know a guy can go spend a hundred thousand dollars to race a buggy or a truck or something like that in a desert race an off-road race but the draw of a side by side is you're starting with this twenty thousand dollar vehicle and for maybe ten thousand or sometimes less than that you can make it race worthy and you can come out and do battle with you know guys like me that are that are factory sponsored but we're in a very stock car as well so it, it's more of a driver's class and a driver's race when you keep the, the machines more uh, production.